Hi there, Steph. Thanks for popping by. So today I'm sharing with you a small haul of products I've bought over the last few weeks, months. Uh, the first one is a stamp set from Lundfone. It's a secondhand stamp set and dies, uh, but they are such good quality that it doesn't matter. They're really good and they'll be really cool for Christmas. So I look forward to using that more. Uh, the second Oh, the second set of stamp sets is three stamp sets actually from Avery Hill. The first one is handwritten notes. Uh, it's quite simple, but I really like it. So the second one is a bit more, I'm not sure what the word would be, but it would work really well on a nice background without adding too much more than just the gritting. And the last one is this balloon stamp set, party animal balloon stamp set. And I love that you may have seen some of our card. I think it's really cool. Um, and the last stamp that I wanted to share is from Technic Tuesday and it's basically one stamp of a load of brushes, large brushes, small brushes, um, there's a paint tube, there's a feather, there's an old school um, ink pen, I, can't, I don't know how they're called but we used to use that when I was a kid, I was terrible at using it, <laughs> but um, it's quite a cool stamp set and it's good quality as well, it's photopolymer. Then here comes the guillotine. Um, I've used until now a fiscal trimmer. Um, actually, before that, I had an X cut trimmer, and then I moved on to a fiscal because I couldn't find the blade for the X cut for some reason. And then I used a fiscal for maybe a year, and I realized that I was using quite a lot of blades. They are not that cheap, and for some reason, I, it wasn't always perfectly rectangular. Um, I don't know if it was the way of the ruler comes out of the... Oh, I had a portable trimmer and I don't know if it's the way the ruler came out of it and did a straighten quite properly but uh, sometimes it wasn't rectangular or square so that was a bit of a problem and a crafty friend recommended that guillotine and it's great it works on Nina Solo White card perfectly uh, here you can see me use it on uh, coordination cardstock I tried two layers of cardstock then four layers and it still cuts perfectly fine uh, it's really good it's really really good I tried it on fun foam as well um, and you know it's smooth I mean you can't say obviously it's brand new I don't know what it's gonna be in two months but I can't imagine that the blade will have changed much uh, the fun foam is cutting really well so you know it's it's really good so far I'm really happy the only thing I would have liked would have been like a safety for children because I mean obviously I keep it out of reach on the shelf but you know accidents happen quite quickly I would have liked a safety on it I don't know if it's just because it's a portable one or it's a cheaper one there's no safety but uh, oh yeah what's good is that you can actually remove the ruler and the handle and put them at the back so it's probably easier to store it because it, it's it's a bit bulky <laughs> so here on my pens <laughs> I tidied them up recently uh, and I give you the sharpie the sharpie I bought about 30 of them um, and they were on offer I'm not quite sure how much they were full price but I paid about eight pounds for 30 sharpies and I tried them. Um, for me, they came really in handy to write name on envelopes because I, I can't use a copy to write people's name on envelopes. <laughs> um, and a normal pen sometimes is just too thin. And I like the Sharpie because it's a bit thicker and you know it's a bit more readable on like a large parcel or a, an envelope depending on the color and things like that. But um, I also thought it was quite cool for lettering, so I've did, I've done some sort of lettering. I'm by no means an expert at lettering at all, but I'm practicing. And uh, I think it works quite well. I mean, the blending is basic. You have to take two shades and, you know, you, you blend the best you can. It is not a Copic by any mean at all. But um, if you want to buy this set for maybe a young teen a teenager or if you want to do a little bit of colouring but not too much, I think it's it's a good alternative. Uh, it won't give you the result of a Copic, I'm not gonna lie. But for basic, I think it works well and it's very good value for money, so, you know, it's worth trying. Then comes the jelly pen. <laughs> I need to tell you about the jelly pen. Uh, I think that's my discovery of the year. I'm not joking. I think I've heard actually people using it, but I had not used it. I had the Pentol, a hybrid gel pen, something until now. And it worked okay until I tried the Sakura jelly roll pen. And then I understood what working meant. Um, I don't know if you can actually, I mean, I'm, I'm drawing something for you here. I don't know if you can see how regular the line is. There's no holes, there's no gaps. It makes small dots, large dots, straight lines, wavy lines, scratchy lines. Um, and obviously the 
stitch line which is the one I probably use the most and the ink comes out perfectly it's regular it doesn't really dry I haven't found one thing wrong with that pen um, except that I probably need to buy more <laughs> so anyway it's a really good pen uh, and it was pretty affordable I found it on eBay and the last product is the Copic Cleaner so as you can see it's about as tall as one Copic Chow uh, it's not a very big bottle it's not cheap <laughs> but it works pretty well and I managed to clean all my Copics and I don't think I use that much um, I use a piece of kitchen roll and I put a bit of uh, product cleaner on my piece of kitchen roll and then I clean the markers and although I use a lot of paper I thought oh god that's a lot of product but it's not actually it was actually okay and you can see that Copic's been on that laminated sheet for quite a while and it's coming off really well so that's it for today thank you very much for watching I hope you'll find it helpful have a great day bye